Okay, so in this video, we will look at so-called p-series. Now here's what a p-series is. It is the series of 1 over n to the p as n goes from 1 to infinity, where p is a fixed real number. So if you expand out the first few terms of the series, you get, well, 1 to n a power p is 1, so you get 1 plus 1 over 2 to the p plus 1 over 3 to the p plus 1 over 4 to the p and so forth. And these series are remarkably simple in terms of their convergence. They are, in general, very difficult to evaluate when they do converge. But to figure out when these series converge, well, the result is very simple. A p-series will converge if and only if p is strictly greater than 1. And that's it. So let's prove this result. And with our previous work, the help of the divergence test and the integral test, this will be a rather short proof. But we will have to break it down into special cases for values of p. So recall that p initially can be any real number. So let's begin with two special cases. We'll eliminate those two cases, and then we'll give a general argument in the other two possibilities. So the case p equals 0. Well, then what is the p-series? But for any positive integer n, n to the 0 is simply 1. So the series ends up being 1 over 1, which is simply 1. And now we're saying we're trying to add 1 as n ranges from 1 to infinity, so we're adding 1 an infinite number of times. Well, if you're trying to add 1 infinitely many times, the result clearly will blow up to infinity. So when p equals 0, the p-series is trivial. We're adding 1 an infinite number of times. The result is infinity. Therefore, of course, the series clearly diverges. And in the end, if the result is true, we should only obtain convergence when p is strictly larger than 1. Okay. Now let's look at a general case. So now we have the cutoff point when p is negative and when p is positive. So if p is 0, the series diverges. Let's now look at the general case when p is strictly less than 0, therefore negative. We will give a general argument for this with the divergence test, and then we'll look at another special case, and then the last general case when p is strictly larger than 0. So let's see. Let's ignore for now the p-series and concentrate on the individual terms that we are trying to sum. So these terms are, of course, what we call a n, the terms of the sequence that we're trying to sum. But think about it. p is negative, so now I can simply rewrite 1 over n to the p as n to the negative p. But if p is negative, negative p is, of course, strictly positive. And now we can look at the limit of a n as n tends to infinity. So we are asking, keep in mind that negative p is strictly greater than 0, we are asking what happens to n to the negative p. This is a positive power. So what happens to a positive power of n as n tends to infinity? Well, as n approaches infinity, a positive power of n will also approach infinity. But now, we don't really care that it's infinity so long as it's not equal to 0. And here you simply have to recall the divergence test. In the case of p being negative, the p-series consists of a sum of terms that in the limit do not approach 0. So the terms we're trying to sum are too big, so the series will blow up, and so we have divergence by the divergence test, which simply states that if you're trying to sum an infinite number of terms, and the terms don't shrink to 0, then the terms are not small enough, they're too big, 
and so the series will diverge. And this is our conclusion from the divergence test. And of course I will simply write by the T4 divergence test. So we're done with p equals 0 and p is negative. In both cases the series diverges. Now before we skip to p is strictly positive, let's look at a special case p equals 1. And you might wonder why we look at this case. And you'll see clearly why when we jump over the last general case when p is strictly positive. And here we'll look at the series directly, as we've already looked at this series in the past. If p is 1, you have 1 over n to the 1, but that's just 1 over n. And this is hopefully familiar. It's a so-called harmonic series. If you expand this out, you get 1 plus 1 half plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4 and so forth. And we've shown in the past that this series diverges by blowing up. So of course, if the series blows up, it diverges. So again, we've done this in the past. Check. And now if you think of it, we know what happens when p is 0, when p is negative. So that's everything below and equal to 0. We know what happens when p is 1. So all that's left is positive values of p except 1. And that will give a general argument for this case. So p is strictly positive and we can ignore when p equals 1 as we already know in this case the series diverges. So let's see. Let's now look at the sequence again. Not the series but just the sequence. Let's look at the function f of x being 1 over x of the p. If p is positive, then as x increases, x of the p increases as well. So x of the p is increasing, and now you have 1 over an increasing function, therefore decreasing. Second, it is clear that for values of x larger than 1, or actually bigger than 0, the function is also positive. So from 1 to infinity, this function, when p is positive, is non-negative and also decreasing. And why am I mentioning these two properties of our function, which of course you notice that f of n equals 1 over n to the p a n, the terms that we are summing. This is because we can now apply the integral test. We have a function that on positive integers equals the terms of our sequence that we're trying to sum. The function, because p is positive, the function is non-negative and decreasing on the interval from 1 to infinity on the interval of summation. And so we can now apply the integral test which if you recall intuitively states that the infinite series and if you recall the simple idea was to view each term as the area of a rectangle this will be approximately the same as the exact area below the curve, the continuous analog of the discrete sequence. And then now, by the integral test, whatever happens to the improper integral, the same conclusion will apply to the infinite series. So let's try to evaluate, if possible, this improper integral. We want to use the power rule here. Of course, we would have a special case if p was equal to 1. As if p is 1, you are integrating 1 over x, which is not done with the power rule, 
but this would return ln of x. But that's why we took care of p equals 1 right from the beginning. So we know that when p is 1, the series diverges. And p equals 1 is the only special case in finding the antiderivative of 1 over x to the p, which I've just said is ln of x. And now as p is not 1, we will never be in that special case, so we now we can apply the power rule. So we add 1 to the exponent, so x to the negative p plus 1, divide by the new exponent, negative p plus 1, this is our antiderivative, which we must evaluate from 1 to infinity. So now if you think about it, we are asking, ultimately, because at 1, this will just be well, 1 to any power is 1 over negative p plus 1. So this will just be a real number. So the improper integral will converge only if x to the negative p plus 1, as x approaches infinity, converges. But if you think about it, what if the power here is positive? If we have a positive power of x, then as x tends to infinity, a positive power of x will tend to infinity, and therefore we'll have divergence. So let's see. So if negative p plus 1 is positive, then, as I've just said, x to the negative p plus 1, if this is assumed to be positive, then we have x to a positive power. This will approach infinity as x approaches infinity. So the improper integral here will diverge. It's going to blow up. So we have divergence. And we don't have to worry about the power being 0, again, because if negative p plus 1 is 0, then p must be 1, but we already have ruled out this case. So either our power is strictly positive, or it is strictly negative. Let me just rearrange this part. So we see that if our power is strictly positive, we have divergence. but send p on this side, so add p on both sides, and this will be the same as p is less than 1. And now we are left with the other possibility. If our power here is negative, but then, if you think about it, you have x to the negative p plus 1, and you're asking what happens to this when x approaches infinity, let me just rewrite this as 1 over x to the p minus 1. So if negative p plus 1 is negative, and I send x down, then I negate the exponent, so this is now positive. And so as x goes to infinity, a positive power of x will also go to infinity, but you'll have here 1 over infinity case, which will shrink to 0. And so this expression as x approaches infinity will shrink to 0, so this will exist, and you will have convergence. So the improper integral will converge, therefore the series will converge. But, if you simply isolate for p here, add p on both sides, then you'll get that p is strictly larger than 1. And now we're done. We have seen by the integral test that if p is less than 1, the integral diverges, and so the series will also diverge. And if p is strictly larger than 1, the improper integral will converge, and so the series converges. And that takes care of all possible values of p. Now let's go back over the entire argument and see when we have convergence. When p was 0, divergence. When p was less than 0, divergence. When p equals 1, divergence. When p was positive, but less than 1, also divergence. But when p is 
strictly larger than 1, this is the only time when we have convergence by, of course, the integral test. So, our conclusion was correct. A P-series will only converge if P is strictly larger than 1. And that's it.